Now this is the M-Audio Audiofield 2496 sound card. But is it any good? And it has Audiofield in it, so it must be a really good card. But is it? Well, let's find out in this video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, like all sound cards, I bought this sound card secondhand online. And so, well, here it is, the M-Audio Audiofield 2496. Now, I remember getting this sound card or being able to buy this sound card in the shops about 20 years ago, because back then I had a girlfriend that wanted to make music for some strange reason. Now, she was as musical uh, or amusical as a chimpanzee is. So nothing came from that, which was to be expected. But still, um, she really wanted to have this sound card and it gave me, an, well, the possibility to test this sound card out. And back then, 20 years ago, I really disliked this sound card. It disliked EAX, something that was really cool back then. It was only 24 bits, 96 kilohertz, whereas most cards back then well, were able to go away up to 192 kilohertz. It doesn't have a headphone output, something that is well relevant to me even today. But now we've moved on. The ex-girlfriend is long gone and it's now 20 years later. And when I saw the sound card coming up online secondhand, well, I just had to have it because this card does have some interesting features. First is, is the breakout cable that it has. It has a little D-sub, which is non-standard, so you cannot connect a, a monitor to it. It's a non-standard D-sub connector where you can connect MIDI cables to it with this breakout cable and an SPDIF input and SPDIF output. Now, this is really interesting. It's, it isn't something that I have seen in a lot of cards. The SPDIF, yes, but the MIDI, that's something interesting. And that's also a giveaway to the targeted group for this sound card, which isn't gamers, it's music makers. There is a Cirrus Logic CS8427 transceiver on it. Now this component is used to connect the D sub cable to facilitate MIDI's and anti SPDIF in and output. There are a couple of JRC NJM5532 dual op amps on there that aren't swappable. Now I could see a component that seemed to be a swappable op amp, but sadly this isn't the case. It's a serial EEPROM where the firmware is stored. But the more interesting components are of course the DSP and the digital to analog converter. The DSP is the VT1712 or the NV24. Now the NV24 was part of the vinyl audio lineup made by VIA. There are several NVs in the lineup, like the NV24HT, which was used on the marvelous looking ESI Prodigy 7.1, where HT is uh, short for home theater. There are several other NVs like the NV24HTS, the GT, the MT, the PT, and there's also a Tremor, a rather strange name in my opinion, but still, it is there. But on the M-Audio card, there is the, just the NV24. And that one supports 8 analog inputs, is 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. Hence the name 2496. There's also a digital to analog converter on, on there, which is the AKM4528, a high performance 24 bits, 96 kilohertz audio codec. Again, hence the name 2496. So, and what does the driver interface look like? Well, here it is. It's good to see something new in this, well, control panel driver interface world, because I have seen so many other sound interfaces or control panels that it's, well, refreshing to see something new, but in reality, it's rather old. But here you have your mixer, input, output, hardware, and the about section. Now, of course, you cannot update this anymore because these are the latest drivers. And here you can change the sampling rate or the ACO settings, the sync source, and all the other settings that you would want in a professional audio environment. 
course also the output, the uh, one two out and the SPDIF out and here the input and the output and here they are all again assembled together. Now I must say that the balance just, I couldn't get it working. I changed this dial a number of times but it just doesn't seem to work anymore. But that's okay, I'm not using it for that. It's nice to see that the audio even works. So what about those Rightmark audio analyzer results? This card gets an overall good score with some very goods in the frequency response and the THD or the total harmonic distortion. Now the frequency response itself is something that I was impressed about. The line is almost completely flat and horizontal. Now this is very good for a card that is almost 20 years old. Okay, so I couldn't use the headphone, or could I? Because I used this little converter cable where you could, well, convert the audio from a RCA to a 3.5mm jack plug. And that's exactly what I did. Now I know, I know there are a lot of people out there that are going to say, well, that isn't what the card was meant to do. And I know, and I agree with you, but I wanted to, didn't want to use an external amplifier that would, well, change the way the sound card would sound like. I wanted to get the audio quality of the sound card as pure as possible. And well, I did like the audio. <laughs> Rob, it was rather good. It was rather hefty on the bass, I must add. Uh, even so, where you could say it was too much bass, uh, the overall sound quality with the highs and the mediums were really good. And I did enjoy the listening sessions. And um, after about an hour, I thought, well, this is kind of nice, even though my ears were pumping from all the bass that was in there. But still, it was really nice, clean audio. The stereo picture was, well, it wasn't as broad as I would like to have it, but it was still really good. So overall, I was rather impressed by the audio quality of this 20 year old sound card. Now, when I got this sound card about two to three weeks ago, I was already preparing to, well, rip the card apart, like I did with the awful SoundCube G sound card, which is the last video that I made, which was a, well, just a horrible, horrible sound card. So I was preparing for this, and it was all based on my experience from about 20 years ago. But then I saw the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer. Um, I did the listening sessions. I saw the specifications and I thought, well, this card sounded, uh, cost about 80 euros about 20 years ago. And it was rather nice. Now this isn't a gamer sound card. I know, I know. But if you want to make music and you really need that MIDI setup, this is, well, a nice thing to have. It isn't expensive. There are some downsides, like the fact that it is just PCI and not PCI Express. But if you have an older machine and you want to do something with audio, this is a really nice option for you. But would I go as far as to call this card an audio field card? No, but it is a decent card. Now I'd like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.